infrared spectroscopy spectroscopy dealing with infrared radiation so infrared radiations are a major part of electromagnetic spectrum so we have here electromagnetic spectrum so we have already studied about ultraviolet radiation which is having a wavelength range from 200 to 400 nanometer and visible radiation which is having 400 to 800 nanometer and next set of radiation which is ranging from 0.5 micrometer to 1000 micrometer so it is occupying a major area in electromagnetic spectrum that is what infrared uh, spectrum this area is infrared spectrum since it is occupying a wide area we have divided this area into three that is near to visible radiation that is near infrared and the middle part is middle infrared and the far part is far infrared so when you take the wavelength it is coming in micrometers that is we can see here 1 nanometer is 10 raised to minus 9 meter so 1 micrometer is 10 raised to minus 6 meter so you can see it is higher wavelength so a set of radiation which is higher in wavelength than visible radiation that is what infrared radiation since the radiation we are counting in micrometer see here from 0.5 to 5 micrometer is the near and 5 to 50 micrometers is the middle and 50 micrometers to 1000 is the far infrared so sometimes we have to use decimal values to record this infrared spectrum so that is why we are taking the reciprocal of wavelength that is reciprocal of wavelength is 1 by lambda that is called as wave number so wave number means here you can see it is 1 centimeter so in 1 centimeter how many waves can be accommodated so if we take wave number what is the reciprocal of wavelength that can be called as what frequency isn't it frequency so here, if when you take the frequency, here you can see the micrometer we are converting, that is the wavelength, we are converting the wave number. You can see here it will be from 10 waves per second, that is near infrared, 10 waves per second to 50 waves per second. 50 waves per second. So from 50 waves per second to, uh, you can say 400 or 4000 waves per second, that is good. 4000 waves per second and from 4000 to 12000 waves per 12500 waves per second so these waves per second that means waves per second means that is the frequency so ideally we can take the middle infrared radiation which is ranging from 400 to 4000 waves per centimeter or we write centimeter rise to minus 1 so the frequency of middle infrared radiation that is 400 to 4000 waves per centimeter and this middle infrared radiation, why we are focusing on middle infrared radiation means, see for pharmacy field, see most of the drugs which are having functional groups, that will be absorbing this middle infrared radiation. So an ideal IR spectrum will be showing 400 to 4000 waves per centimeter. That means the frequency of what that uh, functional group or frequency of that drug molecule. Discovery of infrared radiation. It was an accidental one. Friedrich Wilhelm Herschel, an astronomer, discovered this infrared radiation accidentally. He set up his lab in his house and he was doing some basic experiments in astronomy. There was a prism nearby a beaker full of water. The light was falling on this water and it was getting boiled. And he knows that it is not visible radiation, it is some other radiation which is falling on this light, so in this water and that is why the water was boiled so the radiation is above red and you cannot see it so he named it as infrared radiation so infrared spectrum or infrared spectroscopy is occupying a wide uh, range in electromagnetic uh, spectrum you can see here in the total electromagnetic spectrum it is occupying a wide range that's why we divided this infrared into three regions that is near infrared, middle infrared and far infrared. And middle infrared is commonly used in pharmacy field because most of our drugs which are having specific functional groups will be absorbing in this region or we can say the functional groups will be resonating in with this frequency in the mid IR region. So for example water molecule which is having OH group will be uh, resonating in 3100 waves per centimeter or C double bondo which is having a frequency of 1070 per centimeter. Likewise, we can say 
400 to 4000 waves per centimeter that is the mid ir radiation the interaction of light with matter it can be what the light can fall on the matter and the uh, light can be reflected that can be measured or the transmitted light can be measured or the absorbed light can be measured or sometimes what the scattered light can be measured or otherwise the light uh, a particular wavelength falling on the material it produces another radiation that can also be measured why we are taking ir radiations in frequency or wave number because IR radiation is occupying a wide range in that electromagnetic spectrum. And see, decimal values are coming when you are taking wavelength, that is in micrometer. So that is why we are taking the reciprocal of what wavelength, that is wave number. So that we will be getting all numbers when you take what wave number, isn't it? So if we are concerning with the middle infrared, that is mostly common in our pharmacy field or mostly our pharmaceutical drugs absorb this radiation we will get a whole number and if you can uh, see if you ask me what what is the range of um, frequency used for in middle infrared we can i can easily tell uh, 400 to 4000 waves per centimeter so we can easily s plus just like our ultraviolet radiation that is 200 to 400 nanometer that is coming in wavelength but here uh, this one infrared radiation we are taking in frequency keep in mind because to avoid that decimal values. Okay, then uh, coming to the theory of IR radiation. See, you take a, a water molecule or you take a molecule and see the molecules are having what atoms. How these atoms are connected? Atoms are connected by bonds. And imagine all the bonds are just like a spring. Spring, you know spring. So when you take a spring or you keep it in air, a spring, what happens is you can see small vibrations for the spring. So here in a molecule, these bonds are always in vibrations. That means it can vibrate in air. So when you take the vibrations, we have a fundamental vibrations for a molecule. We have two types of, mainly two types of vibration. That is one is stretching vibration and another is bending vibration. Stretching is nothing, you take a spring, you can just stretch it, isn't it? And you can bend the spring also. So here also in bonds, uh, see I told you bonds are just like springs, it will show what stretching vibrations as well as bending vibration. So if you take a molecule, possibly we have six fundamental vibrations. So that is the first one is stretching vibration. So here I am taking example of water molecule. So we know two hydrogen and one oxygen. And here you can see when these two hydrogens stretch in the same fashion, that is in the same manner from oxygen, you can see we are in the symmetrical fashion, then that is known as symmetric stretching. Okay, if one hydrogen is coming here and another one going like this, that is called asymmetric stretching. And see here for water molecule, the frequency for symmetric stretching is 3100 base per centimeter or centimeter rise to minus one and symmetric is 3020. So you can see here the frequency is different for stretch, symmetric stretching and asymmetric stretching. Then you take bending vibration. So you take this water molecule in a plane, in a single plane. You just like water, this is a plane, you are keeping water here. So these two hydrogens can move like this, move like this. That means it is called scissoring movement. Okay. Or these two hydrogen can move like this. Just can see move like this that is in the same direction this is in opposite direction and this is called scissoring and this is called when it is moving in the same direction is called a rocking movement so bending are of what two types in plane and out of plane and in plane is what scissoring and rocking in water molecules we have scissoring movement in 750 waves per centimeter and the rocking in 1000 uh, 40 is per centimeter. So you can again see the frequencies are different for scissoring and rocking. Then the next is out of plane bending. So you take uh, this water molecule in a plane and uh, imagine this oxygen is in this plane and these two hydrogens are one is above and one is below the plane and it is moving like this. Okay, moving like this. So what happens is this is called twisting movement. 
again what it is having a different frequency okay or if the two hydrogens are moving above the plane or below the plane in the same fashion then that is known as wagging that is also having a different frequency so you can say or see six fundamental vibration that is stretching is of two types that is symmetric stretching and asymmetric stretching and bending is of two types in plane and outer plane and in plane is of two again two types scissoring and rocking then out of plane is twisting and wagging here you can see some vibration stretching of examples scissoring movement a rocking movement these are of alkanes again scissoring group scissoring movement see cs3 symmetric stretching here you can see c double bond or stretching of a ketone then co stretching this is coc stretching the co stretching then this of an alcohol or is bending or is stretching again or is wagging the theory of ir is solely depend on um, hooke's law hooke's law is mainly concerned with the force constant that is k and reduced mass that is if two atoms are having m1 and m2 mass uh, the relation with uh, this reduced mass and uh, force constant is given for the frequency so we can see hooke's law frequency is equal to 1 by 2 pi root of k by mu so here 1 by 2 pi is a constant and k is called the force constant you can see here uh, for different bonds that is if you take a single bond or a double bond or triple bond the force constant is different for a triple bond the k is more so naturally what happens the frequency is also more and for a double bond it is less and for a single bond it is very less so k is directly proportional to uh, frequency and you take the reduced mass that means the m1 and m2 if there is much difference in the masses then what happens the frequency is less but if almost same masses what happens the frequency is more so that we can say the reduced mass and the frequency the relation is inversely proportional so that is why c double bond o frequency is different from ch or cn 